Welcome to the live stream. Today we are going to talk about one meal a day and how to do it correctly. I'm going to talk about the mistakes that I've met, made on my one meal a day journey, which is probably doing it for way too long. More things I've learned and what's been going on with me now. Um, I think a lot of people are new to my channel, so welcome. A lot of people are seeing a lot of my old videos. Any video that I did earlier last year was me in a different place. Now I am in a totally different place with my journey. Um, some of you guys have caught on to that and know that I'm in the process of building muscle and I've started my bodybuilding journey. I will be cutting when the time has come. I am following um, my coach, my personal trainer, who is amazing, Marcella Reyes. I love her to death. We just had a check-in call a couple hours ago, and I have to go over the notes she sent me and everything, but girls got me, got me building, so that is the goal. She's prepping me for a future bodybuilding competition. This is a pre-prep because it's going to take a lot of time for me to transition into where I want to be when it comes to weight loss or doing this bodybuilding journey. It's going to take time. But yeah, I just want you guys to know I'm no longer doing the snake diet. I'm no longer associated with anything to do with that. So people keep asking me questions like, oh, are you going to do this or that? No, I'm not doing anything crazy like that. Right now, my focus is um, building muscle. That is my priority. That is my focus. So yeah, um, no one's on the live stream. That's interesting. But probably, oh, one person just showed up. But it is what it is. I will talk away because I can always cut this short, which I probably need to do because I'm doing mobility. But I am a true believer in using OMAD for anyone who's metabolically ill. I've come to the conclusion that I am, I think I've reversed all of my metabolic damage. I tried to do an OMAD today and I got a massive headache. I got to 17 hours of fasting. Fair enough. My muscles are swollen as heck. My legs are swollen. My back's swollen. Everything's swollen. My rear delts, and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. They're pumped full of water with creatine, and I just realized I'm a hyper responder to creatine because I put on five pounds. <laughs> and I was watching Dr. Mike Isratel's video, and he's like, hyper responders will gain two to like five, sometimes eight pounds. I'm like, okay, that explains it. That explains it all. And Marcella Reyes was telling me yeah, um, you are going to definitely put it on. But I just like dropped the five pounds today. So there's that. So that means my body has adjusted to creatine and now I'll be taking it daily. So I'm just going to make this one quick. I'm just going to talk about OMAD, the best practices and what I believe in. Because I see so many people out there who fast their way into losing a whole bunch of weight and like fasting for days on, days on end and doing rolling fasts and what have you, like that's great and all, but if you keep regaining the weight, there is something not right with your method. I strongly believe in Dr. Mindy Pels' way of doing things. I think it's the correct way. I think it's good to do things in fasting blocks. Earlier this month, I did complete a 47 or 46 hour fast. I do still have it on my um, in my YouTube stu studio. I will release that when the time comes. But I believe that anyone who has a body fat percentage that is in the B, that is in the obese range. So I figured out my body fat percentage using the caliper test. So let me just get, I forget what it is exactly, but what the hell happened here to my phone? But I believe the body fat percentage for anyone who is obese is over 33%, I believe. And according to two tests, um, that's if I did it right. One test says I'm at 29. The other test says I'm at 26. Um, but the test that most bodybuilders use says that I'm at 29. So I believe a body fat percentage um, obese, I believe it's 33. Anything that's 33. Uh, women, okay, it's separated by men and women. Women with more than 30% body fat and men with more than 25% body fat are considered obese. And the reason why I'm bringing that up right now, women Ooh, with more than 30% What the fat. heck? I don't know why my live stream's playing on my phone. That is quite annoying. 
please don't do that. <laughs> and the reason why I bring that up, this is your cat for OMAD. I strongly believe anyone who is at a healthy body fat percentage cannot be doing OMAD every single day. Maybe throw it in once in a blue moon because you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're trying to do OMAD and you're trying to do OMAD and then you're failing. And you're trying to do OMAD and you're trying to do OMAD when you're failing. If you are obese, OMAD is for you. But I think it, and it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not just advocating OMAD. I don't care how you lose the weight. But for anyone who struggles with overeating, for anyone who does not understand the power of calorie counting or macro counting or portion control, OMAD is the best, best practice for you because it allows you to, A, you're getting in the fasting throughout the day. And when you're getting in that daily fast, you're going into autophagy for about in like the 17 hour range, you're going into ketosis for a bit. So that's going to help repair some metabolic damage. And the more and more fast you do and you compound it over time, basically you get more of the effects of the fasting. So the key to all of this is to reversing your metabolic damage. You need to reverse the metabolic damage. And once you do that, and reversing the metabolic da damage corresponds to using losing the weight as well. And once you get to a healthy body fat percentage and a healthy weight for you, you should be learning how to eat properly. You should not be fasting all this time. We are designed to be in feast and famine. We are not designed to be fasting all the time. Yes, when I say fasting like 20 hours or more, you might be able to get away with 16, 8 regularly or 17 hours, maybe the odd 18 hours, but you should be flexible with your fasting. Now, the mistake I made, a rule of thumb with OMAD, I think it depends on how much weight you have to lose, but we'll use my exam, my like history, like for example, I was doing like a 1200 calorie OMAD for months and months on end. I don't believe in doing OMAD 1200 calories for the rest of your life because you risk messing yourself up. I'm living proof of that because I screwed up my cycle. I have now corrected my cycle and I'm destroyed the fibroids and I'm back on track and I've cured my chronic fatigue, which I don't know what it was related to, but I've never fixed, well, it's probably the concussion. I've reversed all of that. So I, I don't want people putting themselves in that situation. I really don't. OMAD is one of the tools. It's a tool. It doesn't mean you stick to it for the rest of your life. It doesn't mean you do it forever and on end. You need to do metabolic flexibility because if you restrict calories too low, you get take the risk of messing up your thyroid. Now, if you're morbidly obese and have tons of weight to lose, do OMAD. Even someone who is morbidly obese, I would say cap a good solid OMAD run for like six to eight months and then learn how to take a break and learn how to mean, maybe not maintain your weight, but maybe try something else. Maybe try doing keto eating throughout the day or doing a regular looking calorie diet. Yeah, the weight loss might slow down, but it's better to learn how to lose weight slowly and not get addicted to that fast weight loss because that's what happened to me. I got really, really addicted to the fast weight loss with OMAD and I didn't believe I can lose weight with any other method. Boy, am I wrong because I'm losing weight with eating throughout the day. But I still do it in a way that's a bit different. So this is the way I'm doing it right now. You can call it a two mad, but I really, like you can technically call it that. Um, first thing in the morning, I wake up, I have a protein shake. I have two scoops of protein shakes. So that's like 60 grams of protein. And then I have a banana. Then I go to the gym, work out, I'm sore. I'm taking an Epsom salt bath. I am doing what I need to do throughout the day, going to my appointments, healing my body, seeing the plenty of doctors I see seeing my physiotherapist, taking care of my son. And then like when all that's done, it's about three, four, it's about three or four o'clock PM in the afternoon. So you can consider that eating maybe twice. And then I eat the rest of my calories later on in the afternoon. That is what I'm doing right now. That's what's working for me. Like I do still believe in time restricted eating, but it's not something that you need to do always forever. You need to learn how to cap it off. You need to learn how to take it easy because I made that mistake. And I see too many channels out there being like, I've done one meal a day for five years. That is pushing it to the extreme. It's all about flexibility and balance. Balance. So let's get into like the best practices. Um, someone says, wow, the before and after on the thumbnails, remarkable. Congratulations. Salty Texas Ranger says, thank you so much. Thank you. That before and after 
was when I made my transformation late or around last year. So yeah, it was, it was definitely a journey. What, I don't even know which one I did. I think I did the typical ones I usually do. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's when I was at my super leanest, like, um, there, that's when I like did a dry fast and everything right now I'm in a building phase. So I'm building muscle and I'm recovering from a setback in September, but Things are working out because we are body recomping. I'm following what my coach says. The first month is a building phase. We're ramping up my metabolism. I'm eating anywhere between 1,800 to 2,100 calories. She's got me at 2,100 calories right now, but the calories don't matter. She was telling me it's all, well, they do matter. But when it comes to bodybuilding, it's all about um, the macronutrient ranges to stick to those ranges. She's like, just focus on the macros. And then she's going to change my workouts in a way where I will be doing more higher reps. Um, so more like weight loss style weight training, if you know what I mean, higher, more repetition as opposed to strength. Right now I'm focusing on the strength, trying to break, break through any strength plateaus. Hey, welcome to the live stream. Thank you to have you here. Uh, nice to see you girl. Nice to see you. I just have crossed a hundred pounds loss mark. Congratulations. Good for you. Where are you at with your whole journey? Like what's the goal? Like how far are you away from it? Cause it depends on how much weight you have to lose. But if you were at a similar place in, like me, the hundred pound mark, you're getting close. So that's where I would highly recommend for someone to learn how to literally diet properly and to learn how to eat throughout the day. The problem with everything is portion control. People do not know how to portion control. People are binging. Once you get that down, it's key. And OMAD is so good at teaching you that. OMAD, I thank OMAD because I, I said this in a vlog that I uploaded. Um, I'm surprised at myself. I never thought I would be able to eat throughout the day and not feel like, and feel like I would have to binge. Because of my experience was my experience with OMAD and OMAD like resetting everything for me, it did, trust me, it did fix me metabolically. I know it did because I my satiety signals are right and my body's responding to things normally when I train. But if it wasn't for OMAD, I don't think I would be able to progress to the diet that I'm doing now, which is eating throughout the day, trying to spread out my protein throughout the day because I'm trying to maximize muscle protein synthesis which is what I was talking about. I remember someone commented on the chart. He's like, OMAD's the worst way to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I built muscle on OMAD, but I can, but you saw the amount of muscle I built on OMAD. Now imagine me building muscle in the proper way. Cause I know genetically I'm like that. <laughs> I have so much muscle on me. I can feel it. It's all loaded with water right now. But yeah, just so I don't want anyone being confused. That's where I'm at in my journey. I was going to try to do an OMAD. I didn't, I did 17 hours and I realized I actually have, a day of training that I missed. I thought I was going to get two days off and one recovery day. No, it's one active recovery day and one fully rest day. I'm training five days. So um, fasting is not recommended right now. That's for sure. But yes. Oh, okay. I'm 306. Oh, wow. Congratulations. And down to 204. It took me eight months. That is absolutely amazing. You are rocking it. Did you do it with OMAD? See? That's a good length of time for someone at that weight with OMAD. That like that is a good length of time. If you're still in the overweight category, like I don't know your height, your stats, and all of that, but uh, or your gender, but if you're still in the overweight category, you can still keep going with OMAD, or you can take a break and or switch things up and see how it works out for you. But that's oh, you're at 15 pounds to go. That's awesome. Now Keep aware, the closer you get to your lowest weight with OMAD or anything, <laughs> the harder it is to lose weight. So if things start to get hard or you start hitting a plateau, um, things I can like throw out there that worked for me when I started getting really, really close to that low, low, low weight or low body fat per percentage. Um, if you're not doing keto, throw in some keto days, more high protein days. Um, maybe shortening, uh, lengthening your fasts a little more, increasing your exercise, like the uh, cardio or cardio style training, um, throwing in some HIIT training. I know I said HIIT training wasn't the best for weight loss, but you're at a point where if you did some HIIT training and it ramped up your appetite, it wouldn't be a bad thing because you've lost so much weight. Oh, you're six foot tall. Jeez. <laughs> 
Wait, yeah, you're really close then. You are really close. Yeah, you're, you see, you're at that point. You're at that point. Yeah, exactly. I had a plateau a couple months ago and went for lion for a couple weeks. Did the lion help? Yeah, that's when, that's the thing. See, when it, when it comes to lose, losing weight with most people, unless they're at a dire space and they're like morbidly obese and they really have been struggling for years and they tried everything. I think for most people, it's not necessary to jump into extreme. So it's not necessary to go into like carnivore right away, or it's not necessary to go into like OMAD keto right away. I call those two extremes. Um, keto, general keto throughout the day, that's a little, but even that, like you can just do the, like the way I started my weight loss journey in the beginning, you can just do the basic common sense diet. Like, you know, you're eating junk, you're eating all the food, just start getting conscious about what you're eating. So once you get conscious of what you're eating, you're going to be like, okay, I know what to do. It's common sense. I'm not going to eat that bread. I'm going to go for whole wheat bread. I am going to maybe cut out bread or I'm going to eat more protein and more vegetables. You do that, you'll get some results. Then when you start hitting a plateau, that's when you want to throw in some of the metabolic switching in there. So it could be like intermittent fasting, 16-8. Try that for a bit. You'll get some results. Keep going. And then when you hit a plateau or you hit a wall, what do you do? Increase the fasting, or you can jump into keto, or you can jump into carnivore for a few times a week. It's all about incrementally working and getting yourself there. And if you tried one method, like with OMAD, and you've been struggling to keep stick to it, switch to something else. You can try something else. Maybe throw in that 36-hour fast if you're you're hitting some of a plateau, or try eating a regular-looking diet but staying in the calorie, like regular-looking high-protein, high-fiber diet. I highly say that. And when I say high-fiber. You want to aim for 30 grams to 50 grams of fiber a day. Some people go more. You don't need excess amount. But like on a good day, I'm eating about like 40 grams of fiber. Fiber As long as I hit 30, I'm pretty happy with just for the gut microbiome because you obviously they play a role in all of this as well. But yeah, you're doing good. But like for this person, Salty Texas Ranger, they went all the way down. They're 100 pounds down. They're six foot tall. They're literally 15 pounds away from their goal weight or their ideal body weight. So maybe that's where he's going to have to throw in or they, um, they're going to have to throw in some like, sorry, there's someone walking there. They're going to have to throw in um, the lion's diet and it got him out of a plateau. So yeah, I just want to keep that in mind. Um, it helped tremendously. That's amazing. I did intermittent fasting over the last couple of years, 24. Yes. And it maintained my weight at 276. Oh, wow, it did. But then I fell off the horse. Yeah, see, everyone's different. So like, I want to give people the tools to be able to think on their own, to be able to think for themselves, to not get stuck in diet dogma. Don't get stuck thinking one diet's going to save you. Like me, I got stuck in that mind frame thinking one meal a day is going to save me. It ain't going to save me while I'm pushing weight. Like I put myself in a predicament last in December when I got coaching from that IFBB protein and I was literally eating 1400 calories and she's like, this is too low. And I was doing the exercises and I just hit a wall and I couldn't do anything. So like you have to be able to think on your feet to be able to maladapt to things. And like this person said, like they did it for 20, uh, for, uh, they did 24 or more for that many times and they got stuck and they fell off a horse and you just have to readjust. Like I want people to be able to think on their feet. But anyway, let's get into like the best practices of one meal a day. Something I didn't do today, you moron. <laughs> I'm talking to myself because um, I was trying to do an OMAD and I should be doing this anyway with all the training. You know what? I'm at this point where I just want to buy my own electrolyte brand. I don't want to make my own. I'm, I'm over drinking my own electrolytes with hot water. If anyone knows any good electrolyte brand, brands, recommend them down below. I think I'll go to my fitness store or my gym store. He's given me really good supplements, the guy there. He's been very helpful. I really like him. Been really helpful. Um, so I'll ask him what electrolytes he has. But best practices with OMAD or intermittent fasting or fasting in general. Have electrolytes. First thing in the morning, take your electrolytes, whether it be an electrolyte drinks, Rather it be something you do old school, like what I was doing with the, ugh, I was just thinking about it. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> with the sodium and potassium um, salt, mixing it in with baking soda. Um, take magnesium. That's an electrolyte. I've been taking tons of magnesium. I'll be taking a lot of magnesium lately now because um, 
my girl, Marcella, who's absolutely amazing. She's my coach. Um, she, we were talking today because I told her how stiff my muscles are. So when I have an injury, my muscles guard. So my neck will seize up, shoulder, back, everything seizes up. So my whole, I got to go do some mobility work after this uh, live stream. I'm so tight. I'm, trust me, I'm seeing a massage therapist, my amazing massage therapist frequently. I'm getting acupuncture twice a week. Like I'm doing a lot. So um, that's how injured I am. But anyway, um, she was so nice. Because she has this um, this company that sells magnesium lotion. And she's got magnesium bath salts too. And I was telling her what was going on. And she's like, yeah, I'll just give you the big bottle for, you know, um, the lower price. I was like, that's so nice of her. She's like, girl, you need it. I'm like, thank you so much. She's so sweet. Like, I like people who are just not, like, who are, like, giving like that and not, like, money hungry and stuff. <laughs> She's like, it comes back to you when you do good things for people. So I'm going to be using her magnesium cream. She's hopefully will help just to put it on top of the muscles. I'll also be taking magnesium supplements. I have been. I've been taking basic magnesium supplements. But yes, going back to Oman, magnesium is your friend. Apparently, who was I watching today? Was it Mike Isratel? I was watching Johnny Shreve and then Mike Isratel showed up. That guy's so weird. Every time I see him, I just think of his wife. I'm like, how does she deal with him? <laughs> he's insane. I'm like, what do you do? What do you say? I would just like stare at him like he's an alien all day. He is so weird, but he gives really good information. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, buddy, where is your mind from? But anyway, I think it was Mike Erzretel. No, it was Johnny Shreve. He was saying that magnesium also helps with, oh, what did he say? I forgot what he said. It helps with the muscle, but it helps with something else. I think he said fat metabolism. I, I might be wrong with that, but I was like, really? But it would make sense. So it's important to take magnesium. I think that's a key supplement that a lot of people are lacking. We're lacking because our soil sucks. But yeah, best practices is to do that. Make sure you're getting in lots of water. Um, tons of water. You want to make sure you're getting in that. And I'm learning more and more about creatine. I never thought I would recommend someone on a weight loss journey taking creatine. But again, I was watching Mike Gears Mattel and he's like someone who has a ton of weight to lose. Cre I mean, even Marcella was saying creatine is a good supplement just to take for anybody, just for anybody, like not a, someone who's working out or anything. Because it's so good for brain health. It helps our brain. It's good for our muscles and everything. But be warned, if you're a hyper responder to creatine, you may put on some water weight. But that will happen for a week. I looked in the mirror. I looked, like, lean. But the scale was messing with me. And Marcel was like, I should have told you that. I'm like, oh, I figured. And then it will drop after a week. So I was like, whew, that's great. Um, but, yeah, I'm not worried about that too much. My focus is building the strength. But yeah, no, creatine is a great, like, I kind of wish I took it during one meal a day. Maybe it would have been a little easier. I don't know. It would have helped out my brain because it's been proven to help concussion. But anyway, that's something I'm going to throw out there. Um, other supplements, you, other things you want to take throughout the day while doing OMAD. Um, I like to take apple cider vinegar. You guys know I love my AVC. Wait, I said that wrong. Apple cider ACV. <laughs> ACV. I took some this morning. Um, it's good practice to take it in the morning with um, some probiotics. I've been, I've heard two different things with probiotics. The lady at the health food store told me to take the probiotics at night, but I've seen other people take it in the morning. I don't think it really matters. Um, if it does matter, I'll let you know. As long as you get the damn thing in, it doesn't really matter. Also with creatine, it doesn't matter when you take that if you decide to. Not necessary because it might mess with the scale, so <laughs> maybe don't do it, um, but um, it can help once you get over that weak hump and your body gets used to it. But um, a good practice is to take apple cider vinegar with some lemon juice. And when I say lemon juice, grab some lemons and squeeze it. That's going to be so good. You want to protect your gut microbiome and you want to help them heal because as you are fasting, you're helping to promote healthier gut microbiome. You're killing off all the bad ones and everything like that. Um, usually, get, oh my God, <laughs> sorry, that's my phone. Oh my God, I should have turned that off. Um, that's my ringtone. It scared me. My son, I chose that ringtone. My son started laughing. He's like, it's a meme. It's the Harry Potter song sung by the minions. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go look at the comments in a second. 
But apple cider vinegar is very good. Make sure it's pure. Make sure it has no sugar in it because these mother, you know what, want to put sugar in everything. Pure, 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 like pure apple cider vinegar, just a tablespoon, doesn't matter. I just splash it in there with some squeezed lemon. I have that. That helps my gut health and it helps to crush your hunger. Take teas throughout the day. Look into herbal teas. Adaptogens would be good to take too. I've been looking into that, especially if you're working out. Adaptogens basically help your body handle the physiological stress that goes on with exercise and with losing weight because our bodies does not want to lose weight. weight. Let's be honest here. The human body wants to hold on to weight. That's its thing. So I started looking at adaptogens like Ash, I'm going to say it wrong, Ashkawanda. Um, I said that wrong. And then there's a few. I ordered them on Amazon. I was telling Marcella that. She's like, good for you, girl. Because I feel like my body is so stressed from the car accident. I'm trying to like, I'm meditating. I'm doing all the meditation, but I'm trying to get it out of the body because trauma is stored in the body. So I'm, it's releasing. So I'm pretty proud of myself with all the mental work I've been doing. Lots of mental work. Where is that list? So adaptogens. I got this idea of adaptogens by watching a video by um, Sydney Gillian. Um, I'm saying her name wrong. Her name's vitamin C. She's seven time Miss Olympia in figure and she's natural. I had no idea she was natural. She's been training since 2005. So it explains why she's natural and she's a track athlete. So she's got freaking fast twitch muscle fibers and she's a genetic specimen. But she was talking about adaptogens for natural bodybuilders because I want to be a natural bodybuilder. And um, she was talking about other things too. Um, I got to look into that when I get into that further. I got to find a coach that coaches natural bodybuilders. So I have no idea who my coach is going to be when we get to that. But anyway, um, I cannot pronounce this to save my life. But these herbs, um, Ashkawanda is at the bottom. Okay, I think one of them is... I'll go on Amazon because Amazon translated it for me. But adaptogens are good to take because it helps bring stress down. And if you're stressed, you're going to spike cortisol. And cortisol, the relationship between cortisol and insulin is not a good thing. Insulin level spikes, you know, the stress, when you're stressed, you store more sugar and all of that because cortisone is the hormone of action, right? So your body's going to start, you know, storing sugar and whatnot. I don't know if I said that right, but... I think you guys know what I mean. Siberian tiger ginseng. Yes. Be taking that. It's going to help improve physical performance and mental performance at the gym and calm my body down. So these are the best practices you want to do. Another best practice you want to do is have your meal at the same time daily. You need this to be as boring and mundane as possible. But I am going to go and look at... Yeah, I saw that. Okay. I use trace, oh, trace minerals on Amazon. I don't know if they are the best, but I like it because there's no artificial flavors and they were dropped. Who knows if they're the best? I don't know either because I was watching Dr. Mike Isertel and he was like, doesn't matter where you get your multivitamins from, just get it. It's all the same because he's a professor too. He's like, it's all the same. Like a lot of things is marketing. You know, people try to market and trick you into buying their products. So if you feel like it's making a difference for you, then it is. I get caught up in that too. It's like, I want the best multivitamin because like there's this thing that multivitamins can have like lead in them. Like I know that could be a thing. Dr. Mindy Pell's talked about it. I like to take, I think if you get multivitamins or any vitamins that are in a veggie capsule should be good because it's, you know, a veggie, it's, it's biological, it's organic, meaning that it's an organic molecule as opposed to something that's inorganic, but our body does take inorganic things like trace minerals. But anyway, that's, I'm going too scientific there. Typic Sorry, I got to be drinking this water because this creatine, this creatine in my swollen muscles. But yeah, you know what? I think it's, it is what it is. I think it's good. You know, I, I don't know the brand, so I can't vouch for it. I definitely have to find a gym. I meant to start at 250, but I have been busy at work. It's okay. Honestly, when it comes to weight loss, the number one thing people need to work on is diet. I think if you get the diet right, you can incorporate the gym later. Like Louise's journey is lost 120 pounds. She didn't go to the gym until later on to start building muscle and all that. 
So I think I think it's better. I think diet is the best way to go. You can do it either way. I did it the opposite way. I started working out right away because it's in my nature to exercise. I'm very energetic. But honestly, it doesn't matter how you do it. But I think the way you did it is fine because you focused on nutrition because that's why people gain weight. People don't gain weight because of lack of exercise. They gain weight because they overeat. Of course, the exercise and lack of exercise plays a role. But there's tons of skinny people out there who don't exercise, who won't want to leave the city. Their exercises is walking around the mall and stuff, but they're still skinny because they don't overeat. So yeah, I think it's fine. But yeah, of course you want to go to the gym and start building muscle because you want to build that metabolism. That's key. That is so key. I, I strongly believe in building muscle. Strongly believe. And just exercising, period. Because as you exercise, you increase your maintenance calories. And it's going to make you more weight loss, weight gain resistant, <laughs> resistant to gaining weight, you know? So exercise is good in multiple. Like, forget about the weight loss aspect. It's good for your heart health. It's good for your mental health. It's good for your oxygen levels. It's good for your brain. It's good for everything. So kudos to you. Yes. <laughs> magnesium helps me with my sore muscles. Yes. That's exactly why I want to get that magnesium cream from uh, Marcella's company. I think it's called Magic Miracle MG. It's called Miracle MG. Um, I didn't know that was her company because I saw it. I thought it was someone who was sponsoring her, but I'll support my girl. I've never heard of a magnesium cream, but I'm going to be getting that and I'm super excited to do that. She has also oral supplements as well on her website there. It's called Miracle MGL. I could go on the live stream and link it, but um, yeah, no, I definitely, I think magnesium's really important. Let's see if I can link it. Um, I'm linking the Canadian version. I just don't want myself talking on the live stream. So I didn't know, I thought, I didn't know that was her company. I was like, that's yours? Um, I gotta find myself first. Where am I? My muscle just twitched. As I look at myself, oh, that's, it says Canada, but it should, you know, let's just get the Canada part out. Yeah, if you want to check out that, that's um her website. She ships through the U.S. She's having problems with shipping with Canada, but she's going to figure that out. Um, but she's pretty awesome. I think it's, it's good for recovery for anyone who is, like, working out and all of that. Because recovery is hard. <laughs> Especially when you're doing it naturally. I know PEDs can make it quick. But even if you have to take that, it's still hard. Like, no one wants to be sore all day. I've been sore for days. <laughs> More so, I was like, I bet. And she's loving it. Um, yes, I think I said that. Oh, they have electrolytes too? I'm going to check that out. Because I need an electrolyte brand. Like, because I'm tired of making my own. I just, convenience, you know? <laughs> That's why I started this meal prep company, um, which I have to finish editing my oh trace minerals i see them okay well they're a bestseller so that might mean something i know and then someone might say oh people can skew that on amazon but usually the best sellers are pretty accurate um what is this this is their mineral drops their concentrate i can what's sorry i'm making sure sometimes it leaves your postal code <laughs> And I don't want that because I've been having issues with weirdos showing up at my condo, which is why I did not did not have a live stream the other day. But um, yeah, I, the cops were involved in everything. It's been a whole thing. My, yeah, there's just stuff going on. Calgary's going to hell. So I have to move really, really south of Calgary. I live like close to downtown, still live in the southwest, but I'm pretty close. I have an access point to downtown and I think a lot of cities are having this problem. The drug problem is a real problem. But anyway, that's a different story. I'm going to keep it light here because that was a whole event yesterday with that involved and stuff. But it is what it is. I think today is a good day and I think everyone's good. If anyone has an issue, they'll just let me know. Um, but I'm looking for their electrolytes, trace mineral minerals, electrolytes. But... Yeah, you can make your own electrolytes to save money. It still does the trick. Like when I lost weight with OMAD, I didn't buy any electrolytes. I'm just being lazy right now. So I want to be able to get things. I just want to make things as easy as possible for myself. Um, hey, Tashira, welcome to the live stream. Thanks for being here, sis. How are you doing? I love your vibes, girl. Hope you're doing well. Sending you mad love. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Do you know any electrolyte brands? 
Fugle Mama, because I know you work out. Let me know, because if you guys know any, drop them below, because, like, I I just need electrolytes. Just, and because I have to drink so much water, it gets boring, too. Like, people, I know people buy, is this it? Oh, there's hy hydrolyte. Hydrolyte's what you take when you, like, have, like, an, a foodborne illness or something, but it's technically an electrolyte, but I want something a little, I feel like that has, like, medical ingredients in it. But yeah, anyway, um, I, t I make my own too. Okay. So you make your, you make your own too. Yeah. Like making your own works. I'm just, I kind of, I'm bored. <laughs> I don't know. I just want something quick and go and I'm just kind of bored of doing it on my own, but maybe I can get creative with it and make batches so I can just pour and go. I can see. I'm trying to do you, trying to do you correctly. Do OMAD correctly. Is that what you meant? <laughs> I make my own too. Okay, so OMAD, let's get back to that. So best practices, number one, take electrolytes. Number two, hunger crushing cues. Let me tell you about the hunger. When it comes to, oh, someone did ask me this question. I'll get back to comments as soon as I can. Right now I'm working on um, editing videos, but someone did ask me a question about my hunger. Um, let's see if I can find it on my YouTube studio. But I want to answer that question because hunger is key. The key to any weight loss, I don't care what you do. Um, that's my live stream. I don't want to go on that. I don't care what you do. Um, but the key to it is um, satiety. Finding a way to make yourself feel full. What I'm doing right now, I am so full. And I have like 1,300 more calories to eat. I don't know if I'm going to get everything down. But we'll see. I have to because I have to stick to my macros. But um, it's whatever diet makes you feel full, whatever makes you feel full based on what you're doing with how active I am and how intense I'm sore all the time. For some reason, I'm not really hungry because I never understood it when bodybuilders were like, oh, um, it's hard to get in this much food to cram it in. I'm like, well, good for you to have that problem. And I'm like, am I starting to have that problem? Because like, I don't. Like, I don't want to eat. I'm so full right now, but I have to, um, to make sure, because I'm trying to build muscle and you have to kind of eat a little bit more to build muscle. I know some people say you can main gain, but learning from all of them, like I'm not putting on weight, but I do have to eat because I'm active. Basically I'm burning more. Where is that question? Here it is. While you were losing weight, were you always hungry or was there a point where you adapt to the OMAD and keto diet experience very little or no hunger? Yes, there was a point where I adapted to OMAD and keto. So with OMAD, the adaptation period took about a month. I started September 4th and things started to get easy around early October, September 4th in 2022. I'm doing the math right. That's when I started. So things started getting easier that way. With keto, again, yes, things got easier, I would say, after a month. I think it takes a month of solid, um, just, I have a video talking about it, how to get OMAD fast adapted. I'll link it in the chat, but I, I go over how long it takes, but if you really um, put your, if you're really, like, consistent with it and go through the transition period, eventually hunger will disappear, especially if you're doing keto OMAD. Keto OMAD is so freaking satiety like driven. It's just awesome. Or even high protein, low carb, high protein, low carb, even if it's not technically keto, anything like that will keep you satisfied. When I first did keto, I was doing high protein keto anyway. Um, some days I actually did real keto, 80-20 keto. But um, I'm just trying to find my video how to get all that fast. Oops. Yeah. Hang on. Fast adapted. And that should pop up. It should, there it is. Oh no, it's a live stream. <laughs> I don't know where that video is. I'm going to have to find it, but it's a really good video. And I talk about how to stop hunger while eating one meal a day. Mm, that's a hunger tip one. I can share that in the community post. Um, if I get the chance to, um, I can share it on the live stream now. That's so weird seeing myself live. Um, there's that one. That's just, that's crushing hunger. Hunger. So that video that I just posted, you are going to need to use that when you first get through the transition. So how do I get, 
Why can I? Yeah, I'm trying to find this video. It's bothering me. I have so much content, guys, on OMAD so much. I'm going to start, like, posting them in my community post and sharing them with you guys because it's going to be hard to find. I do have an OMAD playlist. Um, With that, oh, if I put Daniela Joy, that might work. Because I have so much content on OMAD. I feel like I covered everything on OMAD. It's just a matter of, nope, beginner's guy. <laughs> I can't find this video to save my life. <laughs> it's all my other videos. Oh my God, that is so weird. Um, but the video was very good, but let's see if I can remember what I talked about. So basically to get OMAD Fast Adapted, give it 21 days, give it a good three weeks of doing OMAD, stick to it, get through the hunger, and you will transition and it will get easier. Now with any diet you do, you will have to deal with hunger. But the powerful thing with OMAD is that the hunger, pretty much your body gets used to it. And the way to do it, you need to break your fast at the same time daily. And that's another best practice I want to throw at. Break your fast same time daily. It needs to be the same routine it, your body needs to expect when you eat. It doesn't matter what you eat, but when you eat, that is the key. And when I say it doesn't matter what you eat, I don't want to say that because, you know, if you eat junk food, it's going to kind of hurt you in, you know, keeping that satiety signal low. You can introduce junk food if you want later down. But first you want to be eating just whole foods, healthy foods. But like my OMAD journey, every time I broke my fast, it was around 6 o'clock. You can be off an hour, 6 or 7. It was like 6 or 7 o'clock p.m. An hour won't be a big deal. But do that consistently. Your body will get used to it. And you'll just see consistent change, especially when you have a lot of weight and fat on you to lose. So when you do that, it the hunger eventually dissipates. That's why I was at a point where I was eating so many little calories that I was not at a good point, especially with keto OMAD. Keto OMAD, I talk about this a lot. It is very dangerous for um, a lot of people, especially women, to undereat. And I say women because women can't eat as much as men. Men can eat a lot in one sitting, in a small setting, because men just are men, right? <laughs> We're women. Um, so it's really dangerous for women in that like we tend to undereat with keto OMAD. And that, that will put ourselves in a bad situation where our body will rebel, like what was happening with me. I was getting headaches. I was waking up in the middle of the night. And that's another sign. Don't make that mistake. If your body's showing you symptoms, like if you're losing hair or if anything, or if your cycle's messed up, I just corrected it, thank God, because I'm not going into perimenopause. No, thank you. That's not going to happen. Women in their early 30s are going to perimenopause. Mm -mm. I'm going to be fertile into my late 50s. <laughs> but, like, I value youth, okay? <laughs> but, um, plus, I don't want to go through that. That sounds horrible. But I fixed that, thanks to Dr. Mindy Pelz's tips and all that. It was just making sure I ate carbs at the right time of my cycle. I explained that. But, um, but the thing is with that, it's so easy to under eat with keto because you're not hungry. Your hunger cues are crushed. So when your blood sugar is low, your body is in deep fat adapting. And plus you're coupling it with OMAD. Oh, oh my God. It's just, it's a killer. I love keto OMAD. Will I touch keto OMAD anytime soon? I don't think so. My coach would probably kill me. <laughs> I don't want to risk losing muscle. I know it's probably the best diet to help cut. I think keto is the best diet to help cut, to help preserve muscle. But we're not there yet. We'll see. We'll see what happens when I get to the cutting phase. Right now, I'm at the slowly chipping off weight phase and building muscle phase. But yeah, I do like keto OMAD for that. Oh, I did carnivore OMAD. <laughs> That's keto OMAD on steroids. I'll just tell you that. Yes, it works. Oh my God. But I ate, I couldn't eat more than 900 calories. It was bad. And I had to force feed the last four. Carnivore OMAD. <laughs> I don't know if I want to recommend it. It works. But man, you are, you are going to crush those. You don't want to put your calories that low. That's the thing. Again, you don't want to go too low into a calorie deficit for too long. Because your body will, you know... Like that's something I would recommend for someone who's morbidly obese and has the discipline. Someone like me or someone like Texas Ranger, don't, don't. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it throughout the day. He, they did the lion diet. I'm assuming you're a man. Sorry. <laughs> they did the lion diet. So yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I was the last one who commented. Oh, I missed one. True happiness says I can't extend it fast 
more than 12 hours as I get cravings at night and I eat. And that is okay. That is okay. If you can't do that, there are other ways where you can make the metabolic switch. So here's an example for you. What you can do is you can do a two mad. You can eat every 12 hours. So you can have a good size meal every 12 hours. Maybe like, it depends. I don't know like your height, your weight and all that details, but let's just give an example. Let's say you are a woman who has a lot of weight to lose. You can eat a good six to 800 calorie meal twice a day and you'll be okay. Literally twice a day, every 12 hours. That's still good enough because you'll still be making the metabolic switch. Your body starts producing ketones at 10 hours, I believe. Was it 10 hours? Or your blood sugar starts to go down at 10 hours of fasting. So you'll, you'll still have enough time if you did it that way, eating two meals a day. So that's, that's a way to do it. And that's okay. That's the thing. That's what I love about the metabolic switch. People think the metabolic switch is just fasting. No, you can do it with eating. You just have to space out your eating. So 12 hours is like the bare minimum, but you'll still see results. Trust. I did too mad and I was dropping weight. You can do too mad that way. You can do like two, you can do too mad, like, like I said, six, 800 calories, or you can do the two mad where you have like 400 calories. It depends how many calories you're eating on the day, but like 400 calories first thing in the morning. And then when it's dinner time, have a regular OMAD meal. You can do it that way. So there's multiple ways you can do it. Oh, hey, Sarai. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Nice to have you here. So glad that you're here. I'm just rolling in. Next time we'll start this live stream a little later. I started it at 4.30. I wasn't sure when this started, but I kind of like randomly just came on here. Thanks, Daniela. Oh, no problem. I, I really hope it will work. Trust me. It will work. 12 hours is fine. Don't feel discouraged. Like, I see so much on there. Everyone's doing like dry, like there's these dry fast people doing dry fast for days and all of that. Like I remember I was speaking to Manny and Manny's like, yeah, I can't do more than like uh, something. He said like a 24 hour dry fast or something or 40. I can't remember. I'm like, that's fine because one day of dry fasting is equivalent to three days of regular fasting. I don't think there's a need to do these excessive fasting. Like if people, people have found success with it, that's great. People can find success with the rolling fast. If you can do it power to you, you're healing your body. That is amazing. I'm not bashing it, but it's not like, it's not necessary all the time. Like rolling fasts do work, especially if you're obese, like tons of weight to lose three, 400, 500 pounds. Yes. Roll fast if you can. But even if you are obese, it's not necessary to do the rolling fast. You can get away with doing OMAD. You can get away with doing too mad. You can get away with eating throughout the day, but just eating keto or carnivore, just anything that will put you in a low blood sugar state. Like I just want to break this extremism because you see YouTubers that have been doing OMAD for like years and years on end. Like you're going to mess up your thyroid or mess up something. You know, you, you got to be careful. That's why Dr. Mindy Pell, she says, the only thing I'll mention one is that um, with calories is the thyroid. Your thyroid means at least a thousand to 1200 calories per day. You don't want to be going at a prolonged time. That's why I like that 5-2 diet or what was the other diet? PMS, PSMF diet, the protein sparing diet. That diet says you do it max for six months. Yeah. Do it max for six months for someone who has a lot of weight to lose. That's key. Like don't go further than that. Even that's a lot. So I just don't want people feeling that they need to do these super marathon extreme things. You can do the normal looking diet, but if it hasn't worked for you, you can do the metabolic switch as well, you know? So I just like, there's, there's a happy medium through it all. So yes, best practices with one meal a day and how to do it correctly. So we went over the first thing I said, electrolytes, key thing. Oh, did I say multivitamins? Take your multivitamins. I talked about taking adaptogens. Those will be useful. These are not necessary, um, but it would be helpful. But what I did, let's say what I did. I took my electrolytes, I took my apple cider vinegar, I had my tea, my holly plant tea, I had my sparkling water, which helps out a lot, I drank my gallon, I had my meal at the same time every day, I planned my meal at the same time every day, and I also had my meal on my plate before I started eating. 
One thing you don't want to do is when that 20 hour fast breaks or that 23 hour fast breaks, you don't want to just start shoving your face with food. You want to make sure as the time leading up to that plate or your multiple plates, because you need to make sure you get in enough calories. You got to make sure your plates lined up. You know how many calories is in it and then eat. I think that's the best way to do it. And even on my coaching call today, this wasn't about OMAD, but I was telling Marcelo how I was having difficulty with trying to stick to the macros. Like the calories are good. I'm actually under eating right now, which is not good because of the training. And she's like, because <laughs> she was talking about someone that she was coaching with that's also having this problem too with under eating. And she's like, the best way to kind of do it is to pre-enter your meals into my fitness pal or whatever tracking app you're doing and that's exactly what i did with omad when i was really on a roll i pre-entered my meal into my fit and well carb manager at the time into carb manager and then i had it on a plate i weighed it all out and then i would eat i think that's the best way to keep things in check um sorry Alex, what's going on? Sorry, there's just been weird things going on in our building. I heard the door open. Give me two seconds. Is that the door? I heard the door. Okay. I thought someone was coming. I'm on a live stream. Oh, really? Yes. You want to come say hi? No, no. You don't want to say hi? <laughs> He's out of here. Okay, boy. All right. Sorry about that. I thought I heard the door opening. I've been, there's just been weird things happening in this building and I'm home alone with my son. But anyway, um, so I for, totally forgot what I was talking about. So I'm going to look at the chat. Ryan, I skipped a few comments. So, whoa, I skipped a lot of comments. Hang on. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Uh, oh, wait, what? Ah, I can't. Okay. So your trainer has you continuing OMAD? No, <laughs> no. She said like, I can do it on my days off. I tried to, and I got a headache. I got to 17 hours today and my muscles in my leg, my quad, my glutes, my hamstring, and my rear delts were yelling at me. So I broke the fast with a banana. The banana has been helping with my headaches. And um, some 200 grams, ooh, 200 grams of chicken. My screen's still working. 200 grams of chicken I got from Costco. You know, like the like the pre-made oven roasted chicken, like Pinties, it's like in a thing. Yeah, and I just had a bunch of protein and now I'm full. And I can tell you what I've eaten today thus far. Hasn't been a lot, but Marcella wants me eating quite a bit. No, she says I can do it because I wanted to, but I was like, there's no need because I dropped like three pounds from yesterday or four pounds from yesterday. I forget, three or four, I can't remember. Um, my metabolism's crazy, like with the muscle building. So OMAD is not smart when you are, I'm looking at the wrong one, when you are building muscle. It's just not smart to do it unless I'm cutting. Right now I'm in the building phase. So I've only had, <laughs> this is not a lot. Now I get when bodybuilders are like, I can't eat enough food. I'm literally at <laughs> 863 calories. That is not good. So I had 530 calories of a pepperoni stick because I just grabbed that. Um, <laughs> oven roasted chicken breast, 200 grams and some carbonate. I do eat my keto bread though because they're high in fiber and I don't get issues with, you know, the fructose and all the junk that they put in the other bread. I just like the keto stuff is more pure depending on what you get. Um, but this carbonate's pretty good. I got two slices of that. And then for lunch, I had, I had some Icelandic Greek yogurt. So that's like fat yogurt, but it's no high protein yogurt, very high protein yogurt and limitless whey protein concentrate. So my protein powder and five grams of chia. Yeah. I had some chia seeds and flax seeds. I know they crush hunger too. Yeah, you guys should try that. Throw in some chia seeds and flax seeds into your shape. That will crush your hunger. But no, Marcella says I can do it. But no, it's not smart. <laughs> it's not smart. Like I was like when I was training with the other coach that I won the free coaching with, Team Flex. I was doing OMED and I high, I got knocked down, Sarai. Like it was bad. It was bad with the way I'm training right now. No, no. 
Um, no, <laughs> it can't happen. But I am doing 17, 18 hour fast. And I did do a 48 earlier this year. But um, if I need to, I will. But I feel like if I have, if I can do an OMAD, it would have to be after a day of eating really crappy food. Because then I will have all the toxins in me. And it's easier for me to fast after like Christmas. After Christmas, it was so easy for me to fast. Because I had so much food in my system. It was, but I don't see myself putting myself in that situation because I'm so focused on eating the way I'm eating right now. And I'm so focused on the gym and the gains and the slow. Um, and, and we're body recomping right now. We're going to go into the cutting phase soon. She's going to figure it out. But right now we're in a slow kind of cut. It's, it's hard because I'm taking creatine. I'm training hard. But I'm happy. Like, it's all about, she's like, when this happens, take the measurements because I have like body fat calipers. So I'll be taking that weekly. I've got measurements. I'll be doing all of that. And I'll be documenting that. Sorry, creatine. I'm thirsty. Uh, once I get to that chance, uh, once I get rolling with editing, which I have been. Ryan says, I wish there were more women like you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's too kind. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Try and give women a good rap because we haven't been getting a good rap lately. <laughs> I did a 24 hour dry fast. Nice. Never want to dry fast that long again. Really? It was bad. Oh my, were you moving? Were you working? Were you moving around? That's why if you do it, I don't know, but if you were moving around with a dry fast girl, don't do that. It is bad. <laughs> I did like a 40 hour dry fast walking around and moving and it was horrible. And then I was told not to do that. When you dry fast, you're actually supposed to be at home doing nothing. Literally, just read a book. Be on your bed. Don't do anything. <laughs> Dry fasting's tough. <laughs> I don't know how people work out on that. I usually have a bulk phase where I eat as much as I want and then cut phase where I fast as much as I can. That can work, too. That definitely works, too. I'm definitely not bulking. I don't need to bulk. <laughs> There's no need. I'm more of, like, uh, slow cutting right now. That's where I'm at in building strength. I'm not gaining, but I'm slow cutting. So, and I'm, it's hard to explain because I remember someone posted a photo, um, they were lit of one bodybuilding coach, this girl, she was tiny. She was like 120 pounds, but you looked at the two pictures and they're like, she's at the same weight in both pictures. The composition change on her body was unreal, unreal. Like it was crazy, but she's like got a lean enough weight for me. Obviously I have to chop down more if that makes sense. Um, oh, I said that. <laughs> yeah, no, you need to stay. Oh, hey, Nigel, I see you. You need to not be doing anything during a dry fast. Oh, don't make that mistake. God, that sucks. <laughs> that really does suck. Hi, Nigel. Welcome to the live stream. Nice to see you there, my friend, Nigel Phillip, your buddy with the British name. <laughs> your parents are awesome. <laughs> so British. So English, I don't want to butcher that accent, so I will stop. I used to track, but it's a lot of work, so I stopped. Fair enough. If, like, you got to, like, I advocate for tracking. You know that. I'm a big, like, I'm a big proponent in tracking. But some people can do it if they get the results they desire. So it's all, it's all up to you. Like, you know, you got to figure that out. But personally, I think it's important to track. But some people can do it. The good thing about fasting is it shrinks. Yes, it shrinks your stomach. It does. That's why I love fasting. I don't care if you ADF, if you OMAD, even if you do a solid 18 hour fast consistently, your it goes right after the stomach fat. It just goes for that. Why? Because that's like, I feel like that's the first place your body stores um, weight when it's in excess. The stomach fat, like Dr. Mindy Pell's talked about why. Well, I think the excess hormones, the excess insulin is stored there, excess everything. Maybe it's just easier for our body to just have the fat stored on our stomach so we can, because you don't see anyone just storing, well, it depends on the person. Some people do store fat in the lower body and that's women, um, but you usually get the belly too. It usually starts with the belly and then it, you know, progresses wherever it needs to go. But yes. Oh, that makes sense. That's fun. I try to eat as much protein as I can. Protein is awesome because protein, the thermogenic effect of food on protein, 
you eat protein, your body takes more calories to burn that protein. That's why Dr. Robert Lusting does not believe in calories in, calories out, because every calorie is processed differently. Things are processed differently. Like proteins processed differently than straight up like carbs and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's a benefit. And he also talks about the whole calorie thing. It's different when people have more muscle on too, because the muscles have more insulin receptors. So the muscles are going to soak it all up too. So yeah, it makes sense about eating more frequently while you're building muscle. Yeah, uh, I have to. She says I need to be spreading out my protein throughout the day. So I'm going to make sure I do that. But it's hard. I'm surprised how hard it is. I don't know why. Because I like to eat. But, like, I guess it's the protein. Like, I'm eating a lot. And it just stuffs you up. And then I had some yogurt. The yogurt's really filling me up. Because I noticed with um, – I've always had this problem with cow's milk. That's why I don't drink cow's milk a lot. Like, I'll have coffee cream. That's different. But I won't drink a cup of cow's milk. Like, Ugh. When I have my protein shakes, I use almond milk because cow's milk just sits on my stomach so long. That's the same thing with um, a steak. It will just sit on my stomach. I just don't digest cow protein as well I, as I would digest chicken or pork or fish. Oh, fish? That goes through me. But yeah, I have to. No, I have to eat more frequently. We'll see what happens when I cut. If I'm cutting and I'm eating throughout the day and I'm having issues sticking to my calories, you bet there will be some fasting because fasting just crushes it so like easily for me, for sure. Hey, Fire, welcome to the live stream. Nice to see you here. I appreciate you. Yeah, I exercise. Oh, Sarai. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's why you felt like garbage. Try it again in the future once you you get over the trauma of that. No, that's horrible. Try it again and don't do anything. <laughs> There's also a way that you can do a modified dry fast. So a modified dry fast would basically be like you wake up, you have like a cup of water and then you don't have anything for like 12 hours or so. You can still do it that way and you'll still get the effects of dry fasting. Like a good 12 hour dry fast would be good too. Like, dry fasting is powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish. Did I do a video on dry fasting? I just documented. I didn't do a sit down how to video on it, but maybe I should. It's really important that you don't exercise um, on it and you just literally don't do anything. I felt like garbage when I did that, Sarai, and I was literally just running errands and I was going to appointments and grocery stores and I felt like garbage. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then I was told, no, when you dry fast, you just sit on your butt all day. <laughs> you don't do anything. You just want to be at home when you dry fast. So that's that's key. Don't go for a walk or anything. Try it next time when you recover. <laughs> oh, hey, Joseph. Nice to see you. Hi, Daniela, my friend. Um, good night. Now came on. I'm glad that you've come. I love it that you're here. I always love seeing you in the comments. I appreciate you so much, Joseph. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Send you mad love. Nigel says, finally caught a live. I'm addicted to your page because I can tell you're doing this to really help people and not for fame or money, even though compensation is great and necessary. Of course it's great and necessary. I want to do this for a living. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have your passion for a living, but I will never be one person that would be greedy. Like I would definitely throw out free this, free that. Um, I would just try to help people where I can. I have helped people for free. Like, um, you know, Lisa, she's messaged me. I've given her tips and stuff. I've never charged her anything. She's been a big supporter of my channel. A few people, I try to give tips in the comments. Like, I want to, I definitely want to make this my living so I can help people. But that's not, like, my purpose. My purpose is to really do it. But the goal is, I'm obviously going to have to work when I figure that out. I'm going to have to work some kind of job, figure out my career, and then as I'm, but I always said, I told my psychologist, I'm working to supplement my business, my dream. My dream is to literally coach people, help people lose weight, be a personal trainer. Like that is what I want to do for a living. I, because I'm passionate about it. Like, I just don't want to do something I'm not passionate about. I'm a passionate human being. I'm a passionate person. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I love hard. I love deeply. I'm not ashamed of it. Sometimes you love and hard deeply the wrong people. And then you get angry about it. And then you want to <laughs> That's a different story. But other than that, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So, um, 
yeah, like I, I just have, there's one thing I do have to learn when people treat me wrong, not to get revenge on them. I don't think that's, that's something I got to stop doing. When I say revenge, not to make them feel like how they've hurt me, just let it go. Just let it go. People will hurt you. Let it go. Learn to let it go and not take it personally. That's it. But still show that loving side of myself and still wear my heart on my sleeve. That's all. Or I just, I get angry when people do things that are dirty to other people or people lie and manipulate, you know, for money or for views or for whatnot. Like literally that's why I wanted to do this live stream because I don't want my channel. It's like people are coming to know me because of OMAD, but I want you to know, don't do OMAD forever. <laughs> OMAD's just a short term. It's just use it as a cutting phase. Once you get the weight off, learn how to eat properly throughout the day. You should be metabolically fit, fixed by now. Learn how to enjoy that pasta without going, you know, without losing control. But of course, if you're having that pasta or that ice cream and you're losing control, restrict things back. But I want everyone to come to a point where they can eat regular foods without gaining weight, without feeling like crap. And if you can't get to that point, that's fine. It's okay. There's some people who have to stay on a certain diet for a while because of their that metabolically ill. It's that's okay. That's the rare person. But for the majority of us, like honestly, I want people to be able to have their cake and eat it too. But the important part of all that is to live an active and healthy lifestyle. Build that muscle because that's going to help you keep your metabolism on fire. You know, um, exercise re uh, frequently. Do all those things. But yes, I definitely do. Like, that's my passion in life. I do want to help people. And I'm doing this for free anyway on YouTube. YouTube isn't paying me much. I only got monetized, like, what, a year and a half ago? But I was doing this long before that because it was fun to me. If you look at my old videos, I was such a juvenile. <laughs> Sorry, thirsty. I was so young, but I was actually enjoying it. I Like, that's what I wanted to do. And then I got caught up with the whole YouTube game. Because other people that were around me were blowing up and their channels were blowing up and all of that. And that like kind of was like I was getting caught in it. But I just want it to be fun. I want to share my journey. I want to motivate people to be healthy. Because like I remember when I was losing weight, I was looking for that person that would, you know, that I can like lose weight with. Like watch them. Watch them document their journey. That was Gracie's journey. And then she stopped. So like I want to be that for other people. So my journey right now may not be OMAD. I'll still drop tips on OMAD. I'll still talk about the metabolic switch because it's definitely going to help people because I know for me, it took me years to figure out this whole thing. I wasn't losing weight the regular way. Now that I'm fixed metabolically, I'm able to like, even now I'm still very, very careful with the carbs I eat. Everything's whole foods for me. Like I had yogurt. That, that, is that a carb? No, it's a protein. <laughs> what did I have? Did I have any carbs? Today? I don't think I had any carbs today. Oops. I'm going to have to, oh, I'll have my salad. <laughs> Um, but I'm still having whole foods. Maybe I'll have some fries if there are any. I don't have, oh, I got to figure that out. Ooh, I do have to figure that out. Adamami, that's a carb. <laughs> but like, I'm still having whole foods. I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say. That's what I mean. But yes. Oh, I missed this one. I'll dry fast again. Maybe like a, yeah, that's a good one. A 16 hour goal. And then I'll keep going if I feel good. There we go. Do it. You should. And take that time to read and chill and relax. Oops. Hey. <laughs> I follow a lot of people. Most aren't successful. I really find people that do the work naturally also. Your hard work has paid off. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I feel like society doesn't value people who do hard work. We value like the claps and the, but like we're not valuing results. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but it's okay. I'm going to keep doing my thing and eventually people will appreciate it. Like David Goggins. Oh, that's a dog. Dog. <laughs> eventually people will appreciate the hard work. Like I don't like, I'm not, I admire David Goggins because I admire his mindset. Am I going to run a hundred miler? Maybe once, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it like he does like on a weekend, just decide to maybe once because I do love running, but we're not there yet with running. Run, running is too catabolic. <laughs> Is that the right word? Cat. Cat is break down. Anabolic is build up. No, no running for me right now. It's going to be hit style workouts when I get the chance to. But yes. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me for this like improv to live stream. I hope to start. I will be posting every day again. Um, we'll get that rolling. I do have a couple of vlogs uploaded. I'll probably go live tomorrow. We'll see. I do. I plan on working out tomorrow. I thought tomorrow was going to be an off day. But I have an upper body day. 
that's good because my legs hate everybody. So do my glutes. Um, so we'll just do upper body. I can do, I think my rear delts will hang in there, but my back can use some strengthening. But anyway, thank you guys for joining me for this live stream. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you hit that like button, guys, as that helps get my video out to other people. And of course, it helps the algorithm. And I'm sending you guys mad love. Take care. Bye.